Are we going? Okay. Yeah. Mom! <laughs> yeah! We didn't see that one. <laughs> Alright, so you didn't end up being disjunctions. Conjunction is when you have an inequality statement and another inequality statement, and whatever your graph looks like has to meet both of those criteria. Both of those things have to be true. With a disjunction, uh, no, either of them can be true. Not neither, either. So that's so you're going to have you're going to have two inequality statements, and you need to graph all the points or uh, every you graph everywhere on the number line that meets either criteria, one or the other. And what whereas on a conjunction you have uh, our bounds and you have everything in between, in between, whether dots, whether dots that have that have stopping places at both ends, uh, or something like a barbell. Uh, if it's reals with a uh, with a closed dot or, or an open dot, with the disjunction, it's kind of like you turn you turn those outside, and there's a gap in the middle that doesn't fit either, that does not fit either of the two criteria, and so you'll have what we'll end up having is things that go out in both directions. So then, would it need to give you sometimes two domains? Nope, it'll still just be one domain. So 89 Wait, dots. So then will we graph what it isn't? No, you, you still graph what it is. Hang on just a second, I'll show you. Negative x is greater than or equal to 3, or negative x could be less than negative 1, and our domain is going to be real. So if it says or it's a disjunction. Right. Yes, so let's get, to, so let's get our uh, things going here. Uh, multiply both sides by negative 1. So we're going to have this. And when you multiply both sides by negative, you have to change the direction of this one. So x has to be less than negative 3. Or, do the same thing here, multiply both sides by negative. You've got to change the direction there. So x has to be less than or equal to negative 3. Or it could be greater than 1. So let's get a number line on here. Arrows, please. Get 0. Hang on, I'll get there. 1, 2, 3. Here, 1, 2, 3. Or. All right. So, negative three. Let's see. We're talking about uh, reals. Dots or line? Line. Line. Can X be negative three? Yes. Yes. We're talking about reals, so I need a solid dot here, and X has to be less than that. So I'm going to, I need an arrow to the left. So everything to the left, everything from negative three and left meets this criteria here. Right. But then the other possibility, the or, the or part of it, is that uh, uh, x being greater than 1, those are also things that we want to be graph graphing. And so I uh, come over here to 1. Can x be 1? No. No, when we're talking about reals, so I need an open dot here, and everything greater than, so everything to the right of there. So here's my graph for this example. And so you, you do have to have both pieces. Right. One more example, this one with integers. Wait, if it's x is greater than 1, wouldn't it not include 1? Correct. That's why I have an open dot there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so 89.4. We've got negative x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Or x plus 3 is greater than 6. That's a 6. And my domain is integers. Things like the, a Z with a double line there, that's the symbol for integers. Yeah. All right, so just like with all the rest of these inequality things, I have to get a so I've got X, inequality symbol, everything else. Uh, I'm going to add two to both sides, multiply both sides by a negative one, or by a negative one, Put the sign. change the direction, or in this case, I'm going to subtract three from both sides. So I have to grab this. There are all things that match this one. So I need a number line. All right, so negative two, it can be negative two. Am I doing dots or a line? Dots. Dots, dots because it's a, the domain is integers. So I, it can be negative two, so I need a dot there. And as long as I have anything to the left of that, anything less than that is also also counts. So, there I, so I, I, my dots go all the way to everything that I, uh, every number that I have labeled. 
The dots need to go all the way to the end there so that this arrow indicates that it keeps going to the left. And then I also need to relate this to three. And especially on the disjunctions where it goes out, it's, it looks better to have at least at least two numbers uh, pass where you need to be. So okay, it's B3. No. Nope, it's got to be to the right of three. Well, the next integer greater than or to the right of three is four. So I need to put a dot there and five and an arrow to show that those dots continue that way. So you do have to have both pieces. You have to have dots from negative two to the left and dots from four to the right in order to meet in order to show all the numbers on the number line that fit at least one of these two criteria. Wait, you have to do one or both? You have to show both possibilities. Okay. Because are there any numbers that make that, uh, that fit both criteria? No. Are there any numbers that are less than or equal to negative two and are greater than three? No. No, there aren't. So, that, so the fact that it says that's an or, that's why you have two sections of the graph because all the numbers over here meet this criteria, even though they don't meet that one. But all the ones over here meet this one. So then you're, they going to one. you're always going to have an x is greater than and an x is less than. Anytime you have a disjunction where it's an or, you're going to have two pieces. And one going that way and one going that way. So one's greater, x is greater than something and then x is less than something. Yes. Question. They will never overlap. I don't think so. Think there, there, be no, there would be no reason to. If it, then like, it'd be a conjunction. If it did and it was like still or, but then there was like one where it would overlap with that. Yeah. Let's just not worry about that. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's disjunctions.